Hey, my name's Patrick Malley. I'm here on our family farm, Mangatapuri Berries, that I farm on with my wife, Rebecca, kids, Austin and Eloise, and mum and dad, Dermot and Lindsay. Uh, 37 hectare orchard, growing kiwifruit conventionally, and also hydroponic berries, uh, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and our very own golden raspberry called a soulberry. Uh, and on our orchard, we've got around about 57 full-time staff, and a seasonal complement of up to 120 for nine months of the year. I think it's completely obvious that for us as a grower, water is critically important. It's, uh, it's the main method that we feed our plants in the hydroponics, it's the main method we get nutrients into them uh, to make sure they grow, to make sure they produce fruit, to make sure that we have an economic basis for working on our orchard. Water is, is essentially critical for us, especially in a year like this year. We've we, um, come through a drought, come through a massive lot of stress on our plants, and because we've had available water, we've actually been able to grow and continue growing our business through that period. And the reason why water is even more critical is because out of all the inputs you can have on your orchard, you know, people, uh, consumables, materials, new plants, nutrients, uh, it's not the one that you can just get at will. I can't just have an order of water tomorrow. You need to have it available, you need to have it there, and you need to have it there especially in times like now when it's so critical for the life of your plants and for the life of your business. So we're lucky, we've got a couple of ways that we collect and use water. For our kiwifruit, we've got an on-site lake, uh, which is actually a, a man-made dam for a stream here locally. And we also use uh, natural runoff to fill that lake. Uh, throughout the season and feed our kiwi fruit. For our hydroponic berries, we've got two other water sources. Uh, we're luckily joined up to what's called the local Mongotapiri water scheme, along with hundreds of other growers here locally, and we draw water out of that at need. But also for us, particularly on this orchard, we've also got an on-site reservoir, and we, uh, we fill that directly ourselves through rainwater capture on our tunnels. We've got just over nine hectares of hydroponic tunnels here and we collect rainwater off all of them. Uh, two hectares of them go into our reservoir, and the other seven hectares, we actually capture that water and use it to recharge the aquifer underneath us for the use of, of other orchards locally, and also for, for the future generations. So every year we actually use up to 138 million litres of water on our plants and our hydroponic berries. And that's not even including the kiwi fruit. And that's, that's a huge amount of water, especially for a consumer, you know, when they're trying to relate that to what they can consume, you know, the number of pump water bottles they might be able to buy. And for us, it's really important that we have the ability to communicate that and also to communicate what we're doing in a positive aspect. So with the water that we're capturing and recharging, we recharge 247 million litres of water every year. Um, because just like with carbon, you know, people being carbon neutral or carbon positive, we want to make sure that we are 100% water positive. And with hydroponics uh, irrigation, you know, water management is needing to be so precise. Uh, you don't have irrigation on these plants for as much as four hours, they'll start losing crop. A day, they can start dying. So for us, uh, precision horticulture is probably one of the most important parts of our business. And so we've partnered with Autogrow to make sure that we can manage that in a really effective way. We have an Autogrow multi-grow unit that we use to uh, precisely, not only just uh, do irrigation inputs, but nutrient inputs as well, uh, biological feeding through the roots, everything that we need to grow these plants. And on the other hand, we are every single day, uh, multiple times a day, going out and measuring the runoff, you know, the plant health, the substrate health, to make sure that whatever we're doing around water usage, we're not wasting water, we're not wasting nutrient. And you know that's from an economic driver, but also a really important sustainable one as well. When it comes to the plants themselves, there's also a really big opportunity to measure waste. Um, and that, you know, it, it's water waste, but it's also more importantly, economic waste. So for every single plant we've got, we water them between two and four minutes each cycle, up to 12 or 14 cycles a day. And if you think that there's a percentage of runoff that you might have on that plant, the amount of water loss, the amount of nutrient loss that you could potentially have, and therefore money loss, can be huge. Um, and that's why it's so important to have a real precise input system 
you know, like the one that we have with Autogrow, that we can change on the fly, that we can change from remotely or from our phone or, or from wherever you want. Um, but also really importantly, a good system around capturing data in the field, around capturing what the plants are doing, what you're missing and what you need to change. Yeah, and the, the question around what happens next. You know, we've had such a, a difficult year in terms of, of climate, in terms of rainfall, and, and last year wasn't stellar either. That, that was pretty dry and the winter was dry, which is what's made such a problem for a lot of farmers because the aquifers haven't been recharged. And you think about what's going to happen next, and I think that the big change is going to be that things are going to change more often. I don't necessarily think that droughts are going to be normal, um, but I think you have to have more resilience in your crops. You have to have the ability to weather the storm uh, a lot more than what we used to be able to previously in New Zealand.